There's talk of going off the gold standard. Do you think this is possible in the future? Well, the system now is a different one from the old gold standard. The dollar is the only currency that maintains a link with gold, and your administration has made it absolutely clear you have no intention of breaking the link with gold or changing the price of gold. And I must say, if I may say so, I think the administration is quite right. And one final question, uh, Mr. Modling. Your topic tonight, the Western world's quest for peace. Mm -hmm. Could you sum up your lecture very briefly for us? <laughs> It's a long, hard road, but it's worth walking along it. And what is the hardest part of the walking on that road? Getting people to talk to one another with a sense of confidence and not a sense of fear, I think is basically the problem. And the fundamental problem of peace is friendship between the United States and the Soviet Union. That is of overriding importance in all these things. Do the British have a, any fear of a close friendship between the Russians and the United States? No. Rather the contrary. I, we, we should have very great hopes arising from a close understanding between the United States and, and Russia. Are there fears among European nations? There might be some fear, I suppose, possibly in Germany, that um, a close accord between America and Russia might lead uh, America to lose some interest in the German problem. I doubt it. I think everyone of sense and perception recognizes that the future peace of the world is rest precisely on this. The current labor problems, Mr. Both parties in Britain have laid down what they believe to be the principles on which any settlement must be based, and the essential principle is there should be provision for uninterrupted progress towards majority rule. And that doesn't seem to be acceptable to the Rhodesian regime, and until it is, I cannot see an agreement, which is very sad, but just one of the facts one's got to face. How is the Rhodesian government faring with the economic blockade? Much better um, than the British government thought they would. Uh, they seem to be able to import all they want through South Africa. Their main problem is the sale of tobacco, because uh, South Africa can't absorb their tobacco. In general, I think the position is that whereas before independence, the Rhodesian economy was expanding very fast, it's now pretty well stagnating. I don't think it's falling downhill at all. On the other hand, the thing is the people who feel the effects most are probably the African population, because they are the people who become unemployed when some of the activities in Rhodesia have to cease. Do you think the African nations are becoming more stabilized now outside of Rhodesia uh, and becoming uh, more politically responsible? I wish I believed that. I think it's very hard to, to see. Of course, the crucial problem is, is Nigeria. One hopes to see that solved. That will after all, the population of Nigeria, I suppose, is one of the biggest of any states in the whole of Africa. If that could be solved, a lot of other things would follow. But I never can tell when the next crisis is going to emerge from. What is the average Britain's reaction to the U.S. handling of the Pueblo and the recent reconnaissance plane affair? What the... Well, there was an average Britain's reaction to that. It's a bit remote. It was well covered. The news, of course, very well covered in the British papers. I should say, insofar as there was a reaction, it'd be one of uh, considerable relief that the American administration has played the whole thing so calmly. I think that's about You agreed with the course of action? Well, it's rather important to me to agree or disagree, but uh, I'm relieved that the administration have followed this policy. What other?